$340,608. We need to add to that the uh, appraisal amount on this parcel number five. So we need a motion to approve uh, $73,818 to be moved to uh, the court. So moved. Second. John Schmallenberg? Yeah. Derek Bowling? Yes. Will Rapley? Yes. Uh, am I correct? This will be the first funds that's went to the courts for its condemnation? I'm a little bit, uh, so I've got better knowledge than myself because we're yeah, yeah, but I, on my understanding is this will be the first one. I, well, I, uh, and there will be others, I mean, as, as this. Uh, next thing on the agenda would be a report from HNTV. Unfortunately, Christina did not make the drive down to see. But the only thing I want to bring up is um, the getting utilities relocated. Uh, if you remember right, uh, remember we've discussed this in the past. Uh, the utilities need approximately, they requested 120 days to relocate their facilities. Um, in order for them to relocate their facilities, uh, the right of way has to be cleared and it has to, you have to stake the right of way and allow them to, those proceed. In addition to requesting 120 days to do the work, they want a 45-day lead time um, from the notice received. So there's, you know, roughly 120 days is four months, or right, four months and a month and a half, five and a half months. Uh, the big utilities we're talking about, are obviously Duke um, and uh, Vectrin, which is the gas, and then Duke is the main player because Verizon, ETC, and everything are hanging off of their poles. So it's they're the, they're the main utility that needs to be relocated because all the ones will fall in place after that. Um, we're, we've got, in order to do that, you need to stake the right away ahead of the construction uh, to try to save that time. Otherwise, backing up, if you decide to relocate the utilities um, after the you have the letting, um, then none of the construction would start until you know four or five months after the letting. Um, so that we're trying to crunch or shrink down the schedule of the time here by relocating the, the utilities ahead of the, the actual letting. Uh, that's one of the proposals. Um, with that, uh, we would have we'll have a, a, a supplement to you next month. I will probably get it to you by email here. Uh, probably two weeks um, for you to that would be for your approval or discussion at the next meeting in February and at that same time uh, you, would, you would probably in order to the goal here was that we could stake the right away in about a 30 day time period once we get a notice proceed uh, then after that uh, we would same time that during that 30 days the 45 lead time for the Utilities would be given to them, and then they can actually start relocating their utilities in time frame of April through June. That gets them, you know, have their utilities located by the end of July. End of July, I'm sorry, April through July, and which would fall in line with the current proposed uh, schedule of planning this project in August. So. Um, I stumbled through that. Uh, do you have any questions? If we do the letting in August, when would the project start then? The idea is that once we get the, the utilities were located, if we got them relocated prior, then in theory, the, the contractor would be shovel ready or whatever, they could get the ground running shortly thereafter. Do we intend to do that in August or would we wait until the March? Um, 
You know, you could, in theory, if you, you know, if you let in August, you could, you know, you may lose part of September. We had part of September, October, November, and, December, and around here, you can count pretty much those months as halfway decent construction. Period. Three months, basically, three, three or four three months. Three, month, three or four months. Um, you know, if you, I've seen, you know, if you get a contractor and you get a, a mild winter, you know, you could, you can even them may continue to work all all year round. I mean, in Indiana, typically you count out latter part of December, January, and February. You pretty much write off as non-construction months. But we told the, initially we would run a nine month and a three month deal of all the business owners along Lincoln Street. So if we started in September. Just be reversed, or three reversed. and nine exactly. instead of nine. Yeah, three. but I, it will. There, um, unfortunately, we don't have that. You know, it's going to be difficult unless you know you. The other option is you go back to that original that nine and or that nine and three was based on. You need, we need thirteen months of construction. Um, you know, the idea was to do the nine months, which gets the bulk of the work done in the three. Um, if you want to stay on that same schedule. Um, then you're pushing the construction into 2010 and 11. The problem for the business owner, though, they would have had three years where their you know, there's construction going on, basically. Right? When the, when the, when the, when the, yeah, it depends on how, you know, what, what you define as construction and what you define as impact of the business. Yeah. I mean, you know, relocating the utilities is not going to have much of an impact to them. Um, and some of the, you know, some of the storm, storm water work that's um, off site, you know, it's not actually a long road, but it doesn't have a lot of impact on the viewers. So could we do things like up on Marichal and that area in that three month period of time? Uh, you know, I don't want to say you could, you don't want to put a lot of constraints in you. Know, if you if you tell a contractor you can only work here during this time period, you can only work here during this time period of years, he's going to reflect that in his bids. You, know, you want to give him the flexibility of laying the project down the uh, he sees most efficiently. Do that. In, in the theory, you should get a much smoother job if you can do it as efficiently as possible. You know, these things don't work that you can't just do work and then pick it up and move. Still, to make that August letting, we got to have everything clear by 5, 6, May Correct. 6. As far yes. as all of our property acquired, yes. uh, those you have to have the... So that would, I mean, we got three months. And that may make... Yeah. I mean, it, so that could be the... That could be your deciding, deciding factor right there. If we don't make that, then we're, when, when's the next letting after August? Uh, they continue to let uh, monthly. monthly, I, I believe so. Uh, Obviously, you don't do. They don't do. You don't really let. A pro, if you let a project in December, you're really not. You know, you're not gaining much. I don't think they do too many lettings in December. You know, with the exception of the fact you may want to let in December and then you have the utilities. If they, if the utilities can relocate during the winter months, then that may be a possibility too. But that will save us as far as actual construction time. Actual construction time. Yeah. The idea is to try to get the utilities. Uh, located ahead of the letting to reduce that time frame. So that was the part of the utilities part of that 13 month period? No, we need 13 months of extra construction. I thought 13, 13 months of utilities. The idea was that, yeah, the idea was that, to, you know, that the, if the utilities, the contract needs 13 months with the right of way clear, which means the utilities will be So he needs 13 months. He needs 13 months of actual construction. So, and to take playing devil's advocate here, so we, we don't get things buttoned up by uh, May, we miss that August to letting, which uh, is a possibility. We may not have a winter construction season. And then we'd be back on our nine month, three month, uh, original. 